Hello! This is Palico Patch, and welcome back to more of Sunless Sea Submarina. And we are about to help a little person blow up something of some sorts. I don't know. He wants to be a revolutionary. I'm not sure if it's the best thing to do, but for the sake of continuing the story, we're going to jolly well help him out. And it says here, and this is the thing I've picked up on the most, which is how I'm going to justify me doing this. It says here, assist the gnomic gallivant in his revolutionary scheme. Okay, right. Got that? Sunk in? Great. Right. And then at the bottom it says, this is it, sir. Steal yourself. And get the door for me, please. So all I'm doing is opening a door. That's how I'm assisting him. I am opening a door because he is a short person. He cannot reach the handle. And I am a, well, relatively large person. I can reach the handle. And that's all I'm doing. So that's what we're going to do right now. Boom. The right person, place, and time. Beyond the door is a long hall of chess tables. A dark man from the Presbyterite... Presbyterite... Presbyterate... Is that right? Prezi sits along the centre of the room, playing against himself. The gallivant pulls the package's string. A thousand years is more than enough, don't you think? He tosses it into the room. Before slamming the door, an explosion knocks it from its hinges. Crashing between you both, you peek into the room. The man is dead. As, en as any of the pieces. The immortal man is dead. You've gained one vital intelligence. Oh, I've got two now. <laughs> Your information from the Kumain Canal quality has gone. Your information from the Iron and Misery Company quality is now gone. Oh. The nomadic, gnomic gallivant dusts off his suit. So ends a thousand years. I've one last appointment, sir, in King Eater's castle. Time is a cage and I'm anxious to get there as swiftly as you allow. Agree to deliver the man to King Eater's castle or refuse. Hmm. Well, I've sort of followed it all the way through, haven't I? So I might as well crack on with that. You've already come this far together. See it through to the end. That's how I feel. The Gnomic Gallivant embraces you like a comrade. Absolutely delightful. You have helped my master pen a happier story for us all. I'll be sure to tell him of your assistance when we reach the castle. Okay, I've no idea where the King Eater's castle is, but it would appear that's what we are doing at some point, at some point. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to have to apologise if I sound a little bit gacky this time around. I'm actually recording straight on from the last episode, but in between episodes, I decided to have a bit of a coughing fit, and it's taken me about 10 minutes to get over it. So, I'm a little bit meh in my mouth and my throat. I do apologise, but I wanted to see this through. I, want, I didn't want to just end it there and then come back to recording. I wanted it whilst it was fresh in my mind, and we have a, a, a solid way of going about things, and... This is, this is it. This is what we're doing. And it turns out we're killing people. That's, that's what I uh, held off to do. Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? We need to crack on. So this episode, I was thinking we will open up this little bit of blackness here. If anything pops up, as it did with Khan's uh, Glory Heart and Shadow, then we'll go and venture around and see it. But really, I'd like to open up this bottom part. I've, I'd like to see what's down here. I think this, this will be interesting. And there's bound to be some stuff down here. It's not just going to be a black nothingness or one would... Uh, think of anyway so uh, that's what I thought we'd do on our way back as it turns out we have quite a, quite a bit of fuel left uh, a fair few supplies we now have the money to help with the supply situation so I'm not too fussed as far as that's concerned it's just a case of uh, well wherever we uh, survive or not I suppose sanity is good we did knock it off at the start of this journey so that that's fine uh, and it does mean that fuel will last a little bit longer uh, also, we've lost a crew. Again, I'm not too fussed by that as it stands right now, but that might become an issue at a later point. So, come on, Batty Bat, tell me there's something around. This is going to play merry hell with my evenness around this map, but for the sake of seeing a lot of uh, open space, it might be worth just having a quick look. Discovered the Noctic Lobe, see? just wouldn't have found that if we went around. So yeah, this is going to be a nice slow journey back. Hopefully we'll discover a few, a few more places we haven't seen as of yet. The scent of the Z. <gasps> What's that? What's that? A bound shark. That's only on... No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not going to risk it. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. I'm, I'm confident against ships. I'm not so confident against the, uh, the animal folk of uh, the Z. As it stands right now anyway. I'd like to have at least one more gun. Burning blue. A hiss of horror from the lookout. 
The glim lamp at the front of the ship is sputtering and arcing, fizzing with blue light, even as you watch the blue fades. But it's not a good omen. So we can spin them a story, or we can attempt to calm them. Ah, oh, we'll calm them down. They'll be fine. The darkness in the Neath is more than the absence of light. It is a physical presence that distorts the shape of the world. Your light melts the darkness, restores sanity to the world. You explain something of this to your sailors. It's not the first time they've heard it, but they seem slightly less nervous. Oh, there's nothing like killing suspicion or uh, superstition, should I say, with just good old facts. You know, killing it dead in the water, so to speak. You know, if in doubt, just try and apply logic. That's, that's all you can do, really. We'll throw the old bat out again. Please have something. The reef of roses some distance to yourself. Ah, look, and there it be. There it be. Oh, it's pretty. Reef of roses. I wonder if there's a port around here at all. Uh, something underwater. Well, we'll go to Visage anyway. That's the next bit of Visage. I haven't quite made a mind of how to say that yet. Oh, who are you? Who are you? What are you? Alceus Class Corvette. He's quick. That's my only quibble with this guy. What will he be? He's not coming in our direction. I'm not going to go out of my way to kill him. Discovered the Aphorox channel. Oh. If he wants to start on me, that's a different that's a different matter. I would happily have a go. He's not that big a ship, but he's he's nippy. That's what that's what uh, worries me. Oh well, Calpaca Cove. Yeah, he's got no clue, has he? He knows nothing. Let's check this out. Uh, mm, we'll just ignore it. Get the tail taken off. Not too fussed by that. Boom. Right, so we can go ashore. We can create a port report that we will do. Uh, let's go ashore. Well, we wore masks before, didn't we? What goes on here now? On the low slopes, stone buildings, flat roofs, archways. In the architecture, these linger a memory of lotus and palm frond. The hill is above a face, forever looking up at the ceiling of the Untersea. No one inhabits its cheeks or its hollows of its eyes. Well, let's go and have a gander. All visitors must pass one by one through a room guarded by a person in the mask of a moon moth. So, masks in an assortment of shapes and colours await. Your own fair face will do for you, thanks very much. We can ask for the significance of the masks, or we can just choose one. Uh, what's going on? Maybe there's more to it than a question of aesthetic taste. Moon moth explains each mask declares a different intention towards the dentians of the visage. We're going to stick with visage for the time being. And must be accompanied by a suitable behaviour. The frog is for visitors who, though perhaps clumsy and unfamiliar with local et etiquette, have come in order to observe local ways and to make uncouth comments about them. The locust is for those who seek profit in visage and would carry away as many goods as possible. We want a bit of cash, we could do that. Now you, are you prompt about the bat. Moon moth hesitates. Bat is an ill-omened visitor, sent as a messenger or a spy. Bat always dies. I think I'll give the bat mask a, a miss for the time being. Um, we could go around looking at things as a frog, asking stupid questions. Uh, well, we're on a bigger mission at the moment. We can also come back here and explore this more so. So let's just keep to the locust mat for the time, mask for the time being. Moomoth settles the locust mask, mask, yeah, the locust mask over your head. The eye holes are covered with a thin gold film through which valuable objects gleam more brightly. Oh, may you find a happy harvest, says the moon moth. Then, when you have partly turned away, it double knots the ties on its purse, as though you're likely to pick its pockets. Doesn't it know you can see it? Uh. On the lower slopes, stone buildings, flat roofs, archways, we've read that bit. Um, <clears throat> so we can visit the Library of Parts, visit the Flood Court, or that be it. Okay, so visit the Library of Parts, I guess. 
Stoop at the lintel, enter the dark. A room of heavy stone guarded by a gold statuette of a woman who, with outstretched arms. The scroll niches sorted to correspond to a variety of masks. The jackal and the lioness, the crocodile and the dung beetle. A woman in the mask of the lotus blossom is standing at a lantern, a lectern even, reading in silence. Meanwhile, stand to one side as you escort your tour guide. That's what the purpose of this room. Or oh, we can steal stuff. <clears throat> Okay, let's ask. Uh, what sorts of parts are they anyway? Moon Moss explains. People think it means something like the Library of Fragments, but this is wrong. The parts in question are like parts in the play. This is where the Denzins of Visage come in order to learn how to perform their masks more accurately, more completely with a truer spirit. Okay. So, oh, we can pick their pockets. Uh, we can... Hmm... Still the most valuable looking scroll. No, I don't really want to be doing that. We could read over their shoulder, but... Well, I don't know what happens if we upset them. I don't want the fact we have to wear masks. So we'll try picking the pocket. That's pretty high. <clears throat> you dip your fingers into the crocodile's purse and acquire a few coppers from a heron. The coins here are no more than tiny copper chips, each stamped with an eye sigil. The exchange rate must be thousands of these to the echo. Hardly worth taking home. But you have acted as a locust is meant to act. Anyhow, there are no scrolls for locusts in the Library of Parts. Oh, okay. Expertise in parts. Uh, well, we'll go have a look at the Flood Court, then. The Moon Moth speaks as though you should already know what this is. Uh, the Flood Court is a long stone room with two ranks of columns on each side. Currently, the court is ankle-deep in water, though water stains on the stone show that the flood has often reached higher, sometimes up to the height of your waist. In a raised niche, the, a niche at the far end of the room sits a statue of a man with the head of a ram. He holds a jar from which water flows out onto the floor. I better ask again. Uh, it doesn't really look as though it's good for anything. From a corner, moon from a corner, moon moth picks up a graduated stick. He shows you how a person standing at the end of the room may dip the stick into the water and use it to measure the water level at a pre-selected point, and how the measurements are compared with measurements written on the calendar. If the water level does not match the calendar call position an assembly of pipes and drains is used to adjust it it used to be says the math uh, moth <clears throat> and the water rose and it fell of its own accord and the people before wrote down what height it reached now the water is still but thanks to their actions we can replicate the rise and fall as so to be pleasing to the god of flood it completes the explanation with a half body bow towards the statue of the ram deity hmm okay so we can only Gather coins from the flood court floor. Apparently people are using it as a wishing well. And that's all we can do, so we'll have to do that. Uh, you wade into the water and begin gathering coins. People watch you from behind their masks, but no one tries to stop you. After a moment, the other locust masks in the room swarm with you. The four and five and six of you together, scraping up the coins from the bottom of the pool, working your way along until everything is gone. It is just how a locust ought to behave. I don't succeed cool and uh, that's all I can do end your performance and leave the island you can't stay in character forever you say farewell to the moon moth it makes gestures you now recognize as agitation perhaps there are some other plan for you here but no no one consulted you about it you have other things to attend to your last sight of visage the moths moving the folds from your robe and hanging your mask on a peg for the next visitor okay well, that was weird. That was weird. Right, so. Uh, we could head to the Melting Isles. I don't think there was anything there last time. Uh, we've got Fathom King's Hold. <clears throat> which isn't too far away. But let's just head down south. Straight south. See what's down there. If the ship comes near, I'll go for him. If he does not, I will not. Unless he's going to keep turning round. If I angle... You bastard. You knew I was on to you, didn't you? Screw it. Let's do it. Yes, hello. This could be a long battle. This could be a long battle. He's quick. So, whoa, 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 whoa. If you're going to stop there, I'll stop there too. How's that? Uh, 
That's fine. You can take as many flares as you need, friend. As many flares as you need. It's just a case of... Uh, he's using this boy as cover. It's, he's a clever one. Clever girl. Clever girl. Nope. He's a bit too far away from me now. Can't keep tight on him. Oh! Spunky. One more hit, hopefully. Just the one. Uh, one more, then. He's definitely gone in the next one. If we can just spin around a little bit. Nice. She was a fine ship. Okay. Uh, Cash Curiosities, and you have for me... An outlandish fragment. A smoothed lump of bone narrowed in the centre, bulging at the top. It looks unfinished, but it's traced with spidery lines. A map? A web? Or just something good to touch? Why are you so certain it's human bone? Well, I'm, I'm guessing we'd know these things. What be you? Port Cavendish. Ugh. What do you have to offer me? A scatter of yellow lit honey dens and brightly painted alehouses. To the southeast rises the stone tower of Cavendish Abbey. Its rampants or ramparts even, hung with crimson and gold banners. There are azaleas from all across the neath hauling cargo, dicing and brawling good-naturedly on the docks. The air carries the sound of zee shanties sung with more enthusiasm than skill, and the smell of roses edged with brimstone. Sounds nice. Sounds nice. We'll do a port report first. Though the isle seems at present beyond the reach of the Admiralty's laws, that does not mean that the Admiralty lacks interest in their activities. You spend half a day observing the docks and note an astonishing number and variety of ships. Was that a carnet Tremarian nestled beside a vessel from the Iron Republic? The dockhands complain loudly that they have never been busier. The catties talk ceaselessly and carelessly about smuggling and piracy, but even the most hardened sailors lower their voices when they mention, when they mention the king. Uh -huh. They go even quieter when they talk about the Rose Garden. You make careful notes. Perhaps the Admiralty will understand what they mean, even if you don't. Okay. And the only other thing we can do here is a piratical welcome. Welcome to the Isle of Cats, the wide-eyed dockmaster says brightly. Would you like to bribe me not to write down your details in this nice official ledger? <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. You hand over the coins and she tips you a sharp smile before waving you to the nearest alehouse. The entire process is straightforwardly corrupt and pleasingly efficient. Excellent. The alehouse's sign is a tiger painted the colour of rose petals. Someone has gone to great trouble and expense to gild the creature's eyes. They look out over the port, feral and unseen. A caged hive of lamplighter bees hangs from the ceiling like a chandelier. A few sailors give you hard-mouthed assessing looks, but most ignore your presence entirely. So, significant tokens. The catties all wear a pair of amber stones threaded around their necks or pinned to their collars. Clandestine doings. Uh, I'm guessing we can do all of these. There doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, um, prerequisite to, to click on them. So we'll, we'll just click on them, I guess. Cat's Eyes, one of them says, for the Pirate King. As far as you can gather, the Pirate King's name is Leopold, and he controls all the trade on the island. Half of the cat is believed that he can take the form of Crimson Tiger and creep into their dreams. The other half suspect, more prosaically, that he simply eats those who displease him. Not one to uh, ignore then, or uh, annoy even. A whispered conversation, the clink of coins, an exchange of goods. You turn your head as though you are admiring one of the smouldering draperies hung from the wall. A vial flashes in the buyer's trembling hands. He uncorks it, pours a few drops of thick red liquid down his throat. The vial drops to the floor. When you look back up, he is gone. You blink and look around. Nobody else seems in the least perturbed that a man disappeared from their midst. You pick up the fallen vial and examine the traces left inside. Sticky honey gleaming with redness entirely unlike blood. Okay. Religious observances. Is that a crimson veiled nun? Or what sort of nun would be in a place like this? A mellifluous sister, of course, she responds, performing a complicated negotiation between veil, thick glove and glass of mushroom wine. You ask what one of those is and she snorts, I'm glowing at you underneath this blooming veil. 
You act appropriately cowed, and the mellifluous sister fall, falls a little. You, we are beekeepers and honey harvesters. The catties owe their prosperity to us, and the pirate king too. She slips the last of the mushroom wine behind her veil, and the barkeep glides over to refill her glass, eyes respectfully downcast. Yeah. So, uh, I'm guessing we're leaving here. There must be more to the Isle of Cats than drunken sots and Z stories. Make sure you've learned all you wish to before you leave this place. Well, okay. The barkeep stops you before you reach the door and hands you a brooch set with two amber stones. He waits impassively until you pin it to your clothes. Everybody wears the cat's eyes here, he tells you, moving aside to let you pass. Just a friendly reminder that the Pirate King is watching. It seems that no place then is truly lawless. Hmm. All right, now stuff starts to happen. So what can we do? The honey tongue it is both brothel and honey den, run by someone the cat is referred to as the King's Claw. We have Cavendish Abbey, which we've already, well, we've already seen, we haven't been into. The Crimson Cloud Mellifluous Sisters patrols its ramparts and tend their hives of lamplighted bees. Uh, that's about it. Well, I'm free, single and ready to mingle, so let's uh, go to the brothel. It is both brothel and honey den. Boom. Entering the brothel is like sliding into the dream of a, of a surface oriented list. Jewel embroidered cushions, bright silk drapes, gilded statues of elephants, sun bears, and clouded leopards. Silver censers release curling plumes of rose scented smoke into the air. The courtesans are a red lipped and coal smudged. When you catch their eye, they smile back at you with professional interest. Your actions will attract the Pirate King's notice. You need five Pirate King's notice to gain an offer from a patron. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we could ask what Red Honey is. One of the nearby courtesans' eyebrows lifts infinitesimally, but his reply is practised. When lamplighter bees suck the nectar of the crimson strain of exile's rose, they are driven to madness. They enter the brains of humans and harvest their memories. He shudders, as though imagining the process himself. Those memories are instilled in Red Honey. Each sip is a burst of memory on the tongue. Deliciously awful, isn't it? He flutters his dyed feather fan. Uh, I want her, that's fine. Uh, so, comfort to Z Captain. The Z Captain is weeping gently into a courtesan's bosom, muttering of her lost crew and rose gardens. Uh, okay, we'll see. They're all tending the gardens now, she wails and begins to weep again. My poor crew. You wait for a hitch in the sobs and inquire further. It is a slow, delicate business drawing answers out of her, but you are nothing if not perseverant. It seems her crew was conscri conscripted by the Lady of the Gardens, and that their duties are something far worse than horticulture. You leave her reciting the names of her lost sailors and commending them to Salt's mercy. So, note to self, do not do any gardening here. And uh, that's about it here, so I'll move out. And uh, go to Cavendish Abbey, I guess. Uh, no, go no gardening, no gardening. And the Mellifluous sisters make their home in the richly appointed stone tower of Cavendish Abbey. Their thick gloves and crimson mesh helmets are worn, less for modesty and more for practicality. They tend the hives of the lamplighter bees all across the aisle and make a religious observance of harvesting red honey for the pirate king. Uh, fuel for the bee smokers. We can give up five fuel, which I'm not willing to do, but it's nice to know that is an option. And I think we're done here. Uh, everything's twice the price. Not needing anything at the moment, so I'm good to move on. Good to move on. We'll take the long route around the Isle of Cats. It might open up something else around. Or we might just sneak a peek of something. I've got to get into the habit of sending out the Z-Bat as much as I can, because uh, I, I would have missed that if I hadn't been uh, able to see the, the start of the port around it. So... Uh, We'll just travel close, close to port and uh, keep throwing this bad boy out. Hello! You didn't help me at all last time when you passed. Oh, we've got a mist fading in. Adam's Way, some distance to the south. Well, we shall mark that and head that way now, I guess. Let's go down. The boat's travelling okay that way. I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be fine. Did he just disappear? Didn't even get off off the shit off the uh, the page of the page off the screen before just disappearing into nothingness. That's 
scary. It's a little bit scary, I'll be the first to admit. What the bloody hell is that? Oh, Lordy, that's not good, that's not good. I've seen you before. We're gonna go this way. I'll take a hit on the on the hull if I have to on that. We're, <laughs> we're going into the fog. We've learned our lesson. I'm not taking one of those bad boys on until I've got at least two guns. Right, so Adam's Way should be here somewhere. Oh. Oh, no, there is a port here, though. Uh, we what we got? Apis meat? No idea what that is. They like bugs. I can tell you that much. Uh, on a bed of monumental ruins, warehouses, and way stations of shroom timber rise. Okie dokie. All ships that approach Adam's way are intercepted by the gracious, the Presperette's splendidly hand dressed coast guards. A quaint but invaluable tradition governs entry. You must tell them one of three stories. In return, you'll be permitted to spend a single day in the port. Why well, a foreigners only allowed to spend a single day in Adam's way? For your own protection, one of them <laughs> explains kindly. Uh, and unsafe. The soil of the elder continent is dangerous to incomers. They claim those who linger may contract unfortunate conditions, hysteria, rapture, amanescence, and the rumours that presbyterate, presbyterate, that's it, isn't it? Presbyterate law offers no protection to foreigners after dark. Arrant nonsense. Okay, well we're screwed here. So uh, fuel isn't too bad. Supplies aren't too bad. Um, we can buy coffee, but we can't sell it. But it's a found port, so. It's one for the books, I guess. Let's send the bat out again. Again, I, I just thought that port would have come up before um, just the, uh, uh, what's it called? Adam's Way would have popped up. I think if we stick to the, sh the shore for the time being, just keep throwing the Z bat out, we can always come back and go through the, uh, the rest at a later point. Like for the rest of the blackness, as it were. What be down here? It looks like a cove. Nothing. Nothing is down here. Have I opened it up? No. We're just going to pop down here to open it up a little. We'll throw the bat out. Come on. Let me have it. There we go. Oh, oh. The crawling stars. The lookout shouts far above. The false stars in the cavern roof are shifting. Rare and ominous event. 50% chance. Uh, how's that terror? Well, I'm going to say eyes on deck and just lose a terror because um, I, uh, I'm i very aware that we're now verging onto the point where terror can start to become a bit of an issue. So uh, we do want to watch that just a little. Uh, where is this? Right to the west. The killing wax wind blows out from the south. Engines labour as ailers cry out and fall. Is this bad? Are we, are we gonna lose sailors for being stuck in this? It's quite dramatic. Beats a snowstorm, that's for sure. I don't mind travelling slow as long as we get to somewhere eventually. Becca bites. Anything for anything? Nope. Crying heights, there we go. That's what we were looking for, wasn't it? So I don't think there's gonna be much here. Can I at least get through? Or is this a dead end? Or a port? A port would be nice. Let's throw that out again. Uh, no, dead end. Port AD. Oh, so there is something here, but nothing I can uh, stop at. So back into the wax, I guess. Back into the wax. Just looking for a port now, and then we'll end it there. I, I don't like ending it in the middle of the, of the Z. I like it to be a, a clean cut, as it were. Yeah, we might have to buy some supplies, though. We are running pretty low on supplies. 
feels good. It feels good. Because considering we're on our way back as well, I'm not too fussed by that. But a port of some sort would be nice about now. Come on. It's gone very quiet. See, all we're doing here is boxing in the... Uh, uh, the, the, the blackness in the middle here. This is something I can just come and explore on a separate go. I'm not too fussed by this. Um, I, I would like to come straight up to Fathom King's Hole, just straight north and sort of block it off completely. And next time we can go around the loop and then hit it. But uh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing of anything here. There's no ships, there's no ports, there's no um, sea beasts of any sort. The only good thing is, is traveling along the, uh, the side here, is I'm not getting my terror up at all. Bubles Thicket. Yes, yes. Oh, that looks interesting. It's like a big mushroom. Yeah, and I, I, I thought that the uh, the north coast was very barren. Oh, that's something. Discovered Librarian's Grotto. Port Canadian. Almost there. Uh, this is what I need for the uh, submarine, I think, isn't it? Ah, we might be making some progress after all. And as it turns out, it's pretty much going to be bang on dead south to Fathom King's Hold, which is where I want to go after this. So uh, this could work out very nice. Very nice. And in we pull. And uh, that's where I'm going to leave, th leave this episode, I, I think. Uh, it would appear we've got something to do with the submarine here, along with the port, so we can crack on with that in the next episode. So, thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.